Hi there. During our recent Via Francigena, we kept saying a joke over and over again until it became an old joke. How in the heck did Sigrik make it without having these apps? So we want to cover eight apps that we use to help make our Via Francigena a little bit easier. I'm not going to say it's going to make it easy because it was still hard, but these apps help just a little bit. So we're going to cover apps, two apps for planning our Via Francigena. Uh, once we started walking, one app in particular really helped us stay on track, stay on the trail, let us know how far we had to the next town, etc. A um, couple of apps that helped us find a place to stay each night and uh, two apps to help with communication. And finally, uh, the last app is a translator app that helped us communicate in Italian with Italian people who did not speak English. Now let us know in the comments if we've left off your favorite app or if you have any questions about these apps. Two apps helped with our planning and preparations. The first app is probably the obvious one. It's the Via Francigena official website. Uh, this app is available in English, Italian, and French. And obviously we're using the English version. Um, it gives you some really good information about the Via Francigena. You can plan your whole itinerary. If you click in to itinerary, you can see that you have the on foot or by bike and it covers from Canterbury through all of Italy and it includes uh, the southern route uh, past Rome if you plan to do that. So this is a great planning app if you want to start in England and go past Rome. Uh, some of the other apps I'll show you uh, do uh, cover the Italian portion only and I think they do a little bit better job uh, for that. Uh, but you can get connected, read all about it. I like to scroll to the bottom here. Uh, introduction gives you some really great history about the Via Francigena. Uh, you can get uh, links to obtain your credential. Uh, there are some other guides. If you want to buy a guidebook, you can buy them through here. Information on how to do uh, get your testimonium and when you complete your walk. Um, the itinerary will show the, each stage and give some really good information about that. And uh, the map um, obviously is a map. The other thing where uh, I kept coming back to this app over and over again is you have these criticalities. And these tell you about stages that have some issues. Uh, there were some issues with the wild pigs when we were walking. And we learned about that uh, through the criticalities here. Uh, but you can see here's a temporary route change, um, another temporary route change, a landslide. So uh, you get some up-to-date information on this one. Uh, so this app is really good uh, for that early stage planning. Um, and it's pretty much necessary if you're going to be going um, walking any of the parts outside of Italy. For the day-by-day -day planning, we prefer to use grons.com. We thought that the grons website was a little bit better to help us with our day-to-day -day planning uh, once we decided where we were going to walk from. And grons was originally made for the uh, Camino de Santiago. Uh, so uh, to see the Via Francigena, you scroll down to all the ways and click on Via Francigena. And from here, it gives you some information about the Via, uh, shows you the overall map. Um, and then it gives you um, oh, the Swiss and the Italian portions. So you can see all the stages from Lucerne in Switzerland all the way down to uh, Rome. And uh, what we liked about this is the um, app itself gave more uh, information that helped us with our uh, planning on a day-by-day -day basis. So um, we are, you know, in our 50s, so we don't want to try to beat um, Sigurik on his distance. 
Uh, our average was about uh, 16 to 20 kilometers per day. And, um, you know, one of our first days of walking was the Alto Paschio to San Miniato route. And uh, we wanted to keep this lower. So what this map does is this shows us the um, intermediate stages. So you can see you have 3.4 kilometers to Via uh, Campanilia, and then another 4.4 to uh, Galliano. So uh, what we were able to do was we were able to use this map to help us plan that that first night uh, that we walked from Alto Palcio, we stopped at Fucecchio and got a room there. The other cool thing is if you click on the city icon, it pulls you right down to the specific um, accommodations that have registered with this site. And for some of them are on booking.com and you can see the price. Uh, you can see the distance. Uh, so it's 350 meters from the path. 150 meters from the Via Francigena. This one's at the foot of the road, so it's right there. Uh, so uh, this information was very useful for us to plan how we wanted to, uh, how far we wanted to walk the next day, and then actually book the room. So it's what we did when we arrived in the town. Said, hey, how you feeling? Uh, pretty good, let's walk to San Miniato today. So then we'd map out the distance and then uh, book a room. That was how we did our planning. The other thing uh, that this app does is it gives you a hill profile. So for this particular route, it's not very steep. Um, this last little bit right here was, that was uh, kind of fun getting up to Fucecchio. We were tired at the end of the day. Um, and San Miniato, we took that hill when we were fresh. Uh, but uh, you can see the stage. Uh, the weird thing about this map, north is kind of pointing in this direction. Um, they did this so you would get a nice um, horizontal map. So we recommend uh, Grand's app uh, for the day-to-day -day planning for these reasons. Um, you get the map that tells you the intermediate distances and you get the stage profile for the altitude and it helps make uh, finding an accommodation very easy. During the walk we used Slowways app to help keep us on track. The alternative is to use the official Via Francigena app which is also a mobile app uh, but we found that the Via Francigena app did not work as well in a offline mode when we were not connected to the internet. Uh, so we use the Slowways app. Now, both apps have about the same information. Uh, the Slowways app was developed in concert with the Via Francigena app. Uh, one difference is the Slowways app only covers the Italian portion of the Via Francigena. Um, from Aosta down to Rome, it doesn't go beyond Rome and it doesn't cover the French Switzerland or English portion of the Via Francigena. So if that's the case, you'll want to use the Via Francigena app and uh, just make sure you're connected to the internet uh, when you're through those countries with a data plan. But let's dive into the Slowways app and I'll show you why we really enjoyed using it to keep us on track. The Slowways app is available for iOS and Android. We found it to be the best app to keep us on track for the VF and it works well offline while hiking. The app covers the Italian portion of the VF to Rome and the stages match the official itinerary. Individual stages can be downloaded to operate offline. Each stage has a description taken from the official Via Francigena guide. The altitude profile shows the upcoming hills with your location as a dot. The map shows exactly where you are in relation to the VF trail. The tracker shows the trail, your location, direction, and the remaining distance in the stage. Okay, finding accommodations on the Via Francigena, we used two apps, Booking.com and TripIt. 
Booking.com makes it easy to find a place to stay. And uh, the grounds map, which we're using for day-by-day -day planning, links directly into booking, which makes it even easier. So I can quickly go from that detail planning to booking a room. If the initial place that I chose was full or not available, some, some of these places were closed, uh, booking.com provides nearby places. The whole booking process is in English and prices are shown in dollars. Of course, you can configure your language and currency in the app settings. One issue that I had with the booking.com app was getting the address or directions to the hotel once we arrived in town. To help with that, I relied on my favorite travel app, TripIt. TripIt automatically builds an itinerary of your whole trip and organizes the information to make it easy to use. Keeping in touch is very important during the Via Francigena. Uh, for some of the places, uh, some of the hotels or accommodations we stayed, we actually had to contact the host to come let us in and check us in. Uh, they weren't uh, present at the site where the room was. I think a lot of these people had multiple apartments and rooms uh, throughout the town. So we would need to coordinate with them when to be at the hotel. So it was very important to be able to communicate with them uh, while we were in Europe, in Italy, with um, our mobile devices. So here are two apps that really helped do that. Aerolo makes it easy to install and maintain an eSIM. And this is how you can use mobile data in Europe. Um, you could also just use the international plan for your carrier but I found for my carrier that was very expensive. The uh, Aerolo eSIM was much less expensive. Most of the hosts and hotels we stayed with uh, used WhatsApp to communicate. So WhatsApp uses either Wi-Fi or mobile data, making it compatible with Aerolo data-only plans. So we used uh, an app called the Microsoft Translator which makes it possible to communicate in another language. Um, and this does it in real time. So this provided three ways of translating uh, from Italian into English and back and forth. Uh, first is you can choose the camera icon uh, to take a picture of written words. It's like a, a sign, uh, and we read a lot of informational signs on churches and uh, historical sites that were written in Italian. So we were able to take a picture of that and then uh, use the translator app to uh, translate it into English so we could understand what was on that Italian sign. The keyboard entry was useful when sending or receiving messages in Italian. We could copy the information. Uh, let's say um, our Italian host sent us an email in Italian. We could copy that text and paste it into the um, Microsoft app and get a translation into English and then uh, translate our response in uh, to Italian and send it back to the host. And one really cool usage is the microphone. It listens and automatically translates on the fly. This was useful when we interacted with Italian people that did not speak English. So in conclusion, those were the eight apps that made our Via Francigena much easier for us. If we left out your favorite app, please leave a comment below. Um, or if you have any questions about any of the apps we mentioned, uh, please leave the question in the comment section below. Thank you.